thank you so much for including me in the uh, STEM ambassadors list for Massachusetts recently. That was a huge honor for me. Flying cars have been something that's been on our collective consciousness for almost a century now. So the first patent for a dual-use vehicle, it actually was also a boat, um, was granted in 1918. It really shows the history of ideas like this and this sort of yearning that we've had for decades to combine the convenience of driving and the freedom of flying. We've all been stuck in traffic. And the awful thing about being stuck, stuck in traffic is that it's one of the few times in our modern American lives where we really don't have personal freedom. So there's clearly a need for additional personal freedom and a desire to solve that problem by taking to the skies. Now, looking at this, we think, well, we already have general aviation. We already have small planes. We have airports all over the country. And they're not very, very busy. Um, I'm not talking about Logan and JFK. I'm talking about the Hanscoms and the Beverly's and the Minuteman fields that are one or two runways small designed for general aviation traffic. And those really are not used. In fact, NASA identified those airports as our single largest underutilized transportation resource. So we looked at these problems and we said, well, what could solve this? Well, a flying car would solve all of these. So to give you a sense of the history of the company and where we're going, because it's even more exciting, I'm going to turn it over to my husband and our CEO, uh, Carl Dietrich. So thanks. It, as Anna said, it really is a privilege to be here addressing all of you because uh, in a large part we are here, we are a product of this educational system that we've got here and uh, it, it's really a thrill to, uh, to be addressing all of you today. MIT has a fantastic network that helps inspire and encourage entrepreneurship and risk taking. And um, we entered into the MIT 100K business plan competition in 2006, and that year we were the runner-up. Earlier that year, I had won the Lemelson MIT student prize, which also came with some money, so we took our $40,000 then, and we took our fledgling concept, which really at that point was not much more than some computer graphics and a wind tunnel model. Uh, it was about this big. We took that concept to the biggest air show in all of general aviation. And at that show, we met the people who would become our first customers and our first investors. We left that show with seven checks in hand. To us, that was a real validation. We went back to Oshkosh in 2008 with the shell of a vehicle that hadn't yet done anything yet, but it looked like a real car, real airplane. And sure enough, uh, in March of 2009, uh, the first flight of our first vehicle. We learned a lot from that first generation uh, vehicle and we incorporated the lessons that we learned and the desired changes uh, to a second generation prototype. And what we've been able to do with this new one is really go out and test the waters outside of our core market. Our core market is the general aviation pilot. We wanted to find out if this idea would be as exciting as we think it has the potential to be for people who are not pilots. So we went to the New York International Auto Show last year. And at the big aviation shows, we might come away with a couple dozen serious qualified customer leads. We went to the New York International Auto Show and came away with 250 qualified leads, people who could afford to buy this vehicle. So that's very exciting and it's showing the potential of this concept to get people more excited in building the industry from the ground up. It's not a short term thing to do, do something like this, but it's something that has incredible long-term potential uh, for the overall economy. And one of the things that has happened since we founded the company seven years ago is the FAA has continued to evolve the way that they will be regulating light aircraft. And they're adopting these new industry standards that are formed by international committees of uh, people and companies like Terra Fuji and other general aviation companies and they're adopting those standards as a basis for certification. So what that means is that we can actually bring new technology to market faster. So that got us thinking and we said, well, what if we didn't have to worry about regulatory requirements? And we came up with this next generation concept, which is extremely exciting. We call this new concept the TFX. TFX is really the Jetsons. It's a vertical takeoff and landing flying car. Um, it's a vehicle that can fold up its wings, still fit inside a single car garage, carry four people at a speed of over 200 miles per hour, drive on the road when the weather is too bad to fly because you're still going to have real realistic weather limitations. 
but it's something that, you know, conceivably, if we had one of these things today, we could have flown it here from Woburn, and instead of taking an hour and 10 minutes to get here, it would have taken about 10 to 15 minutes, and we could have landed down here out in the parking lot. Uh, it's a very exciting idea, and something that the component technologies to do this are out there today. So what we want to do is share that vision with people and say, look, this is possible, and we can do this over the next decade. It's inspiring a lot of new thought, uh, not just in other companies, um, but in, inside the FAA. And uh, it's a really exciting time uh, to, to be working on this sort of technology that has such broad-reaching uh, implications for, for all of society.